We hope you're enjoying this Manitoba Championship Sunrise Morning Draw, brought to you by Sunrise Credit Union. Building a brighter future together. Eat. Meet. Stay. Canad Inn's destination centers are your home for hospitality, with 10 locations in Manitoba and one in North Dakota, featuring the finest in accommodations, food and beverage, entertainment, banquet and conference facilities, and so much more. For the best service and best value, your only stop is Canad Inn's. Call today at 1-888-33-CANAD or visit us right now at canadins.com. You can win a pair of tickets for the 2023 Tim Hortons Briar in London or the 2023 BKT Tires and OK Tire Men's Worlds in Ottawa, plus $500. Or maybe equip your team with a set of four of Asham's new Ultra Force brushes. And at the same time, support the Manitoba Curling Hall of Fame and Museum and Curl Manitoba's Curling for Life Endowment Fund. Raffle tickets are available now. One for $5, four for $10, 10 for $20. Buy online at fundingchange.ca slash curlmanitoba or scan the QR code on your screen right now. Welcome to East St. Paul, Manitoba, just north of the city of Winnipeg, outside the perimeter highway. A flyover shot from earlier this week. A beautiful, bright, sunny Manitoba morning, a little bit of hoar frost, a beautiful picture. And inside that arena, you'll find Caitlin Laws and her team currently on the ice in their pregame practice, preparing for what I believe might be called the most anticipated curling game of this entire curling season, anywhere, anytime, right across the curling world. I anticipate we'll have a uh, audience across the curling world as Jennifer Jones and Caitlin Laws finally meet on championship ice. They knew going through the season there might be possibilities of Bonspiel play between the two, but uh, uh, these two teams going in two new, di new direction for this quadrennial uh, have highly anticipated game, a game potentially what we might call a game for a lifetime. Resby Coots will uh, well, bring you the uh, uh, description of the game. Alongside me is my uh, analyst, color man, and a student of the art and the science of this great sport of curling, Barry Gorlick. Barry, uh, just, uh, as I say, a game for a lifetime. Game of a lifetime. Two women, now as Skips, who spent 12 years curling together. Caitlin throwing third stones for Jen. Between them, 67 years of experience as curlers. We can't tell you how old they are, but our arithmetically inclined listeners and viewers will want to know that Caitlin started curling at the age of four. She has 30 years experience. You figure out her age. Jen started curling at the age of 11. She has 36 years of experience, and Jen has the added bonus of having been at the daycare center at St. Vithel Curling Club, watching and listening to her curling parents between the ages of 2 and 11. So we can't wait to let them loose because this game, the number one and two seeds, is what this bond spiel to this point has been building up to. Two undefeated teams, they uh, both through their round robin uh, and through the first two rounds of championship play, Laws versus Jones. And uh, uh, we think we can anticipate uh, uh, this uh, might well be the championship final game tomorrow. So perhaps this is just a preliminary round, but there are some games between. And at this moment in time, for this game, what rides on the line is a bye to the final Sunday afternoon and the last rock in that final game once they are there. So uh, a whole bunch rides on this game as we uh, look forward to um, two teams, uh, both clearly at the top of the game. Um, lineup change for the Laws team from the outset. Formally, the third for the uh, uh, Laws team is Selena Negevin. Selena has not been on the ice. Not true. Selena has been on the ice through practices. She's very much supportive of the team, uh, but has decided in the best interests of, uh, of her baby's health that she will not play this week. Um, not too bad a replacement in Jill Officer. And uh, we see the last uh, of the practice shots sailing down the ice as uh, the next shot we see will be Caitlin Laws and her attempt to throw uh, to the button. 
Caitlin is going to have to cover the pinhole and then win on the triangulation measure because Jennifer Jones has already done that. Uh, Barry, um, uh, through some of these games, we've seen some tentative opening ends. Would you anticipate anything tentative about Jones laws in this game? Not on your life. In the 12 years they played together, their DNA was collectively to go after it, to get a jump on the other team almost unsuspectingly. Well, there's nothing unsuspecting about any of this. Caitlin knows exactly what Jennifer's going to do. Jennifer knows exactly what Caitlin's going to do. This is going to be game on from the first stone. As we get into the first end uh, uh, and later into the game, uh, but early in the game, we'll talk a little bit about what you think of as the, the differences and the similarities between the teams, but specifically between the skips. Uh, but right now, we're going to watch this shot track down the ice. It is uh, Caitlin Laws and her draw to the button. This is the shot for Hammer. One stone delivered by each team, as I mentioned. Jennifer Jones has uh, covered the pinhole. Caitlin Laws, Officer, and McCush with the sweep on that shot. She is going to bring it right to and cover the pinhole because it is at the other end of the ice frankly i cannot tell you uh, whether or not it is better than the jones stone or not uh, so we're going to have to wait until we come back uh, from uh, our first commercial break as we get into the first end of play we suspect that jennifer jones will have last rock but we'll let you know does the expression game on even been Begin to describe what we've already seen. Two draws to the pinhole for Hammer. We'll be back with the first end of the championship final round game between Caitlin Laws of Fort Rouge, Jennifer Jones and her St. Vital Altona team in just a moment. small town part of Manitoba is, is really big in the winter. It's something for the community to do and it really brings the community together. We can hold annual events like our bond spiels and our, and our weekly nights. It's really something to do for everyone in the community and can do it from any age. You can win a pair of tickets for the 2023 Tim Hortons Briar in London or the 2023 BKT Tires and OK Tire Men's Worlds in Ottawa, plus $500. Or maybe equip your team with a set of four of Asham's new Ultra Force brushes. And at the same time, support the Manitoba Curling Hall of Fame and Museum and Curl Manitoba's Curling for Life Endowment Fund. Raffle tickets are available now. One for $5, four for $10, 10 for $20. Buy online at fundingchange.ca slash curlmanitoba or scan the QR code on your screen right now. You can win a pair of tickets for the 2023 Tim Hortons Briar in London or the 2023 BKT Tires and OK Tire Men's Worlds in Ottawa, plus $500. Or maybe equip your team with a set of four of Asham's new Ultra Force brushes. And at the same time, support the Manitoba Curling Hall of Fame and Museum and Curl Manitoba's Curling for Life Endowment Fund. Raffle tickets are available now. One for $5, four for $10, 10 for $20. Buy online at fundingchange.ca slash curlmanitoba or scan the QR code on your screen right now. Please, 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 please. 
Well, we're back inside the East St. Paul Arena and you do see the entry of the teams as they parade on the ice. I can tell you that Caitlin Law did win last. Laws will have hammer. We have two other games on the ice, of course. We have a game for pride between Lisa McLeod and Darcy Robertson. We have a game that could create a tiebreaker between Abby Ackland and Beth Peterson. Ackland won this morning, Peterson lost this morning. That creates a, a must-win game. Uh, if Peterson wins, she goes to third place. If Ackland wins, they come back on the ice at eight o'clock tonight in a tiebreaker game. So um, we've got two draws on the two games of the three that we'll be watching today. Our center ice feature game, um, the Caitlin Laws, Jennifer Jones matchup uh, over on Sheet C. We'll be keeping an eye on it. So as we've done in the past games, we will uh, um, we'll give you television of this center ice game. We'll give you some uh, radio on Sheet C. And we will not completely ignore that other game. Uh, we know that friends and family are interested in the outcome of that match as well. And we'll keep you updated on the score there. My name is Resby Coots. Alongside me is Barry Gorlick and... Barry, uh, settle in. Uh, this is going to be fun. Big fun. During this morning's telecast, I alluded to the fact that for curling fans and even new to curling fans, uh, this is a Christmas present. 21 days after Orthodox Christmas. Uh, it's going to be fireworks. It involves two skips whose curling IQ off the charts and what's most interesting of all is the hundreds of hours and thousands of stones Jennifer Jones has watched Caitlin Laws throw and Caitlin Laws has watched Jennifer Jones throw means that there's nothing even close to a secret. There's nothing they don't know about each other from the point of view of the way they release the rock, the way they call the game, the way they make line calls. And so they're gonna get perfect reads off each other's throws perfect reads off each other's teammates' throws, and that's going to lead to a margin of error that could me, probably approach go. zero. My prediction, we're going to yep. see an extra end really today. No, yeah, keep going. So go. I will uh, set okay. the stage okay. for what I anticipate is a uh, more than a fair few individuals who are joining us for the first time. We've been here uh, at Center Ice in the East St. Paul Arena for the entire duration of the competition, but um, this highly anticipated Laws Jones matchup, uh, the word is spread around the curling globe. If you are joining us for the first time, uh, I'll simply tell you the one thing that uh, you need to be aware of but right from the outset is that the no tick on the center line rule is in force. That uh, uh, has not been played here in Manitoba this season, uh, but uh, for this event, for the men's event, two weeks from now in Nepo, Manitoba. Uh, that new no-tech yeah. rule is in effect, uh, given that the winner here goes on to the Canadian and uh, potentially on to the world uh, with that same rule in play. So uh, uh, our, our winner coming out of the Manitoba Championship will have won under the rules they'll play yep. under at the, uh, at the next levels. Caitlin Laws immediately going after Jennifer Jones by attempting a draw around the center guard that Jennifer placed there. It wasn't perfect, so Jennifer drew around her own guard, and Caitlin now is going to come right down to Jennifer Stone. But the second rock of lead Kristen McCush on the Laws team. Kristen familiar to viewers as a member of the former Team Fleury team, uh, she, along with Selena Negevin, joined forces with Caitlin Laws this season. And I, and I will tell you, uh, uh, the two lineups, uh, the Laws team, Kristen McCush at lead, Jill Officer standing in at second, Jocelyn Peterman has moved up to third. Caitlin Laws is the skip. And if you ever have any wonder about Jill Officer, no question in anyone's mind, if there were an all-star team selection at this event, Jill Officer, clearly the all-star second in the event across the competition so far, has not missed a beat. Uh, as far as the Jones team, they do have the five-person lineup uh, rotating in and out. And for this 
occasion. It is Lauren yeah. Lennantin at Leadstone. Mackenzie Zacharias yeah, will throw, throw second. Seven. She'll hold the broom for Jennifer Jones. Carly Burgess She'll throws the third stones. Jennifer Jones is skipping the team that is officially listed as representing St. Vital and Eltona. And if there's any doubt about the quality Heads of down. player on the ice, at various times, Reload. don't take our word for it, no less an expert than Russ Howard has on many occasions at various times referred to Jennifer Jones as the best skip in the women's game, has referred to Caitlin Laws as the best third and now skip in the women's game, and has referred to the entire Jones lineup, the current lineup, as being the most to be looked at group of junior women the Zacharias team that won Manitoba last year as the ones to watch the most. So this is really something. Jill Officer, I have to add this, over the years referred to by Russ Howard, Mike Harris, Joan McCusker and others as the best second ever to have played the game. So uh, what we have here is Manitoba curling royalty, no question, uh, royalty, no question, uh, but Canadian and world curling royalty as well. But uh, uh, slips already by both teams and uh, our viewers will know from having watched that that is a clear indication to you of the amount of swing to this ice. As, uh, first the Jones team and then next Jill Officer rub with their shots. So we see that direct tapped to bite the eight foot circle that Yellowstone will be second shot. Uh, does leave a two rocks width port for Jill Officer on her second stone of this opening end. They learned a little on that previous shot. Wait. Curled. Jocelyn Peterson asked to give the sweep to curl. Does just that, hits and rolls back behind a couple of yellow stones over to the left hand side of the rings. Biting forefoot. Kind of seeing this. The red stones are laws. The yellow stones are Jones. Red lies first and third. So Jennifer Jones takes the ice four inches outside the edge of the eight foot circle to draw across. She wants to be buried biting the other side of the button in, on the Close. T line. The big Keep curl going. to the center line. Hard. She does get it past there. Keep going. Just lost the weight, eh? Okay. But okay. curls over and rubs that red stone in the 12 foot circle. Red shot like stone. That. Yellow, second sure. and third. I, I have a quarter. Yeah, you only want to hit like a piece, basically. Quarter is good. So there is a guard out from that yellow stone in the rings on the left-hand side. Uh, you heard the indication, Jocelyn Peterman saying, I can only see a quarter of it. Caitlin saying, you don't need to hit a quarter of it. Yep. Yep. The Peterman hit is underway. Hard. She's looking at getting past Hard. that guard for a double kill. Hard, Hard sweep to get it by. Hard. Does not. Crashes in. Another feature of the Jones Laws matchup is that you're going to hear the most vigorous yelling yeah. for sweeping among any of the teams in this 12 team field. They get their message across loud and clear. So the yeah. 
first of Carly Burgess's stones. She's playing yellow onto red to remove her own, but or to remove the law stone in the forefoot. Over curls. They're feeling each other out. They're already calling difficult shots yeah. and uh, execution uh, is still to come. Kate, this is your line, Jill. A little less weight, but I still think I can throw nice and positive. Jocelyn yeah, Peterman's so second stone of this opening end. Oh, An out turn. Thanks. <laughs> She'll try to hit that yellow roll back to the left. to set a guard. Clean. Yep. Oh. 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 Jill. Jill. Now she Hard asked Jill Officer to give it the Hard. make it sweep Hard. Hard. or make it curl sweep. She does make the contact. She rolls, but does roll too far. Okay. Leaves two yellows Good. back 12 foot. Good sweeping. Me too. At this moment in time, red lies first yeah. shot, yellow second, red third and fourth, yeah. yellow fifth. And now the end has changed, Barry Gorlick, to, no, we have to roll it. favor Jennifer Jones. Like you heard Jennifer say she's looking for a significant roll here, throwing 10 second weight, so nice control weight that will take some of the curl but allows the inside brusher uh, to uh, hold it on line if needed. The outturn hit yeah. underway. Jennifer comes to that red stone. She's going to get to the nose of it just a little bit inside, rolls a little inside. And Caitlin will look at hitting, rolling off that yellow stone in the top four across to the other side. Depending on how much of the shot stone she contacts, she'll roll in front of or roll against the yellow now second shot rock. The Ackland Peterson yep. game is down to final skip yeah, right, rocks right, right in the first end, yeah. and there are no rocks in the rings at present. With Megan Walter set to deliver her last stone, trying to play a draw to the edge of the 12 foot behind a short corner guard. Difference of the two games, uh, two younger teams, uh, certainly experienced, certainly quality teams, but a bit tentative in the opening end, uh, where on our feature game, Laws and Jones, uh, right into the game, right from the outset. Caitlin Laws, first stone of the end. Yep, hard, 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 She's looking to hit and roll, roll, it, roll it, to the center line. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Does just that, just across the center. Peaks out a little bit on the other side, but not enough to play with. So for the first time in this game, and most certainly not for the last time, Jennifer Jones is faced with a very precise draw to the edge of the button. To guess on the ice, but we need to for sure... During the right. previous game when Jennifer Jones played okay. Beth Peterson, the, the game just... opened with Peterson lying four... Jennifer Jones needed to bite the button with her last stone of the first end and covered the pinhole. Uh, first end that uh, had it gone the other way, the Peterson team might have changed the complete result of that game. Jennifer saying to her front end, it's a guess on the ice, but let me suggest that's a pretty thoroughly educated guess. This Yellowstone does need to come in and touch the button. We remind you that Caitlin Laws throwing red does have the 
last stone. The Jennifer Jones stone will slide deep. And all of a sudden, we have in play a possible double that, if made, could in fact result in a count of four. No hesitation at all in giving it a try for three reasons. One, she's that good. Two, she's that good. And three, she's that good. And there's a fourth reason. It's the first end. Why not? I, I would agree uh, with all of the above on the why not question exactly. If she, if she does get that perfect shot, it is a four. And it's a dramatic change in the game. If she hits and rolls out, she still has already scored a single point. Uh, so it'll be a minor disappointment not to get the deuce, but uh, uh, there are times when things are called turning points, and I don't suppose they happen often in an opening end, but all of a sudden, this is one of them. The risk-reward equation Please. is always at play in a game oh, yeah. of Jones versus yeah. The outturn hit on its way down the ice. She is going to make... A bit of contact, she is going to hit and roll right across, give up only the single as Jennifer Jones and her team, I suggest, might heave a slight sigh of relief. We'll go to our first break with Caitlin Laws scoring only a single on a possible shot for four, and Laws leads Jones, one nothing, coming to the second end. Today's sponsor, Sunrise Credit Union. Building a brighter future together. Eat. Meet. Stay. Play! Canad Inn's destination centers are your home for hospitality, with 10 locations in Manitoba and one in North Dakota, featuring the finest in accommodations, food and beverage, entertainment, banquet and conference facilities, and so much more. For the best service and best value, your only stop is Canad Inns. Call today at 1-888-33-CANAD or visit us right now at canadins.com. Where can you find handmade pizza, classic burgers, scrumptious salads, the finest Manitoba sourced fried chicken, and so, so, so much more. Chicken Chef, bring your appetite. We'll take care of the rest. Our second end is underway. Jennifer Jones uh, breathes a sigh of relief. She allows Caitlin uh, Laws the opportunity to hit for four. Her rock curled up just a little too much and rolled across the face of the second stone. Uh, if it hadn't curled quite as much, she might have uh, got the double and scored only a three. If she had curled a little more, she might have stuck for a two, but uh, only a single point as Caitlin Laws throws her first rock four or five feet short of the rings on the center line. Just a question, even though I don't have the image, I can look at the feed screen. Line's good. Let it work. You got extra line. Okay. Extra line car. Max rock. Line's getting better. Top four, but let it wait wait as long as you can. Go wide open. Go back, go, go, go. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Sorry, Lauren. So, as with the first end, a center line guard and the opposing team trying to draw behind it uh, once again. This early in the end. Two rocks in play. Yellow, the Jones team. Jill Officer is asked to play an outside in hit. I mentioned the outside in aspect uh, because as we've watched games throughout this week, I would guess, I uh, hazard a guess, very half the teams, maybe the small half, have played inside out. The other half, the larger half, but still only about half, have played outside in most of the time. And so I'll be interested to watch 
the Jones and Laws um, assessment of these ice, of this ice on this day, uh, to whether they play inside out or outside in. Exactly. They're getting exactly uh, five and a half feet of movement at the moment. And as the pebble wears down as we approach mid-game, uh, that will get closer to six feet and maybe even a bit beyond that. So that's what they're used to on the pro circuit. The slam ice contract requires there to be movement of between five and five and a half feet. So it's right in their wheelhouse. So Mackenzie Zacharias put her rock top button right top behind. Jill Officer follows. Comes up about a foot short, but she'll be happy with that. Here we begin a line of rocks, the acorn, yellow, red, bounce. yellow, yep. soon to be followed by yellow. another red if this bye one's bye. made. The sweepers don't agree. Yep. When the Perfect skipper spot. said it looks heavy, they started to lean into it even more. That's... Uh, uh, an indication of a lesson to be learned by less experienced curlers watching that uh, uh, the skip in that situation is fully qualified to give advice. The sweepers are fully authorized to ignore that advice. And the only thing they weren't able to do, they were brushing so hard and breathing so hard, was to thank her very much for the suggestion that it looks heavy. First of third stones here in the second end, Jocelyn Peterman. So we've got yellow, red, yellow, and here comes another red. Comes a little deep, and as you heard Jennifer say, and, and we will allow our... We don't have to whip it. We'll Good night. We'll allow our commentators, our athletes, to be uh, the eight on ice color commentators to the extent that we can do that. And you heard Jennifer say a nine, a hit. Get rid of no. a couple of reds. No, Lauren. Close. Yeah, straight. 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 Uh, sorry, Car. My fault. My fault. That's good. Yep, my fault. Did not get to that second red over curled significantly. Not that a two time Olympian should ever have to apologize for very much. But Jennifer, being the class act that she is, okay, make okay. clear to yep. her other teammates that um, calling them on to try to curl the rock uh, had caused it to jump a little bit and uh, lost the effectiveness yep. of the shot. So Peterson will try to clear things up a little bit. She's going to get rid of... One yellow stone pushes a red out to the side. Two yellows left up the center line. Still not a tidy situation for the Ten. Laws team. I like that throw. Jennifer looking for a hit, high side, a little bit of a roll out behind the corner guard. Clean, yep. It's Carly Burgess with her intern. Go, I got it. 
does make the contact, a little bit of an outside roll. Skip rocks to come. Jones, this time, is the team lying three. Perhaps not for long. The straight run back on the top yellow stone on the center line in the 12 foot is called for, and uh, this is one of Caitlin Laws's favorite throws, right down the center line. An out turn that is going to be set just barely to the line of the rock that is in turn just barely off the center line of the target stone. So the out turn down the center line does come to the nose and she will make that double kill. Red sticks on the center line high in the 12 foot. Yellowstone line one, two reds. I would venture to guess, Resby, that based on the warm applause after that shot and the prior shots, this capacity crowd is already feeling they're getting their money's worth. Yeah. It's uh, been an interesting time between the early game today and the this four o'clock draw here in Manitoba. Uh, the committee did what might be referred to as a little bit of uh, restructuring, a little bit of scampering uh, added uh, chairs perhaps for as many as a, a hundred more people. It's uh, not a huge arena. We anticipate like it. that it might like hold it. Like now maybe in the range of like 600. Yeah, Carly's Rock. Yeah, you gotta go. Someone who's self, yeah. Hard, you gotta bite the eight foot. And if 600 is the number, all Hard, of those chairs are full. So it's a Jennifer Jones keep draw. Going. It's gotta Hard, touch the eight foot circle. It's gotta be full in the 12 foot circle. And our on-ice color commentator he simply uses the word close, which doesn't help us a lot. Now, like we can trust it, and give you a little ice. Yeah. But yeah, whatever you're. And if I go, I'd rather go buy it. Yeah. Okay. Just pick it. Yep, I like it. I don't think we can play it quiet. No, I agree. Yeah. No clear indication, Barry, yeah. whether or yeah, not. You got her, Caitlin. Red, red or yellow is shot stone. But I am sensing that, in fact, there may be two reds beating the yellow biter. Or not biter, but the rock in the top 12 foot. And here again, early moments in the game, Caitlin is wanting to ensure that the clear shot stone, that yellow stone, is not only removed, but that she gets a roll away from what she may believe is at least one, if not two, of the red counters. First objective, however, is an outturn that needs to contact the yellow rock that about half peeks out oh, from behind oh, a red oh, jail, 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 rock jail, in the jail. top 12. Okay, okay. It's the big weight. She's going to flash right by it, I suggest. Misses by a couple of inches. And now Jennifer Jones looks at the possibility. Yeah, it's, it's close. Like, I'd look again, but... It's just whether we want to try this for three or just, or just draw, draw for two. I mean, two is pretty big. Just kind of seeing this. Clearly, that uh, information tells you that yellow is a fourth shot rock here. And uh, Jennifer says, I'm kind of seeing this double. So, just as Caitlin Laws played um, the hit for a possible four on the first end. Jennifer Jones 
rather than playing for two, is playing the possible double kill for three here on the second end. Whenever Jennifer Jones says, I'm kind of seeing this, uh, the best response is to tighten your lips and just breathe in slowly. So we'll see. Jennifer Jones in the hack. An out turn. comes to center, it's gonna to come to the nose of that stone. It's gonna roll right away. It's enough. May have actually made the double kill for the three. Okay. Sorry guys. So not entirely clear how many points have been scored. Two points, I believe. Well, we'll say it is. 2-1 Jones over Laws, and uh, we'll confirm that when we come back from this break before the third end. Today's sponsor, PharmaSafe. Canada's Community Pharmacy is proud to support Canada's community game. Asham Curling Supply. Superior fit, comfort, and performance. Asham Curling Shoes are the best we've ever used. Hi folks, I'm Arnold Asham, and our product is always satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Asham Curling Supplies. That's your best delivery of the day. You can win a pair of tickets for the 2023 Tim Hortons Briar in London or the 2023 BKT Tires and OK Tire Men's Worlds in Ottawa, plus $500. Or maybe equip your team with a set of four of Asham's new Ultra Force brushes and at the same time support the Manitoba Curling Hall of Fame and Museum and Curl Manitoba's Curling for Life Endowment Fund. Raffle tickets are available now. One for $5, four for $10, 10 for $20. Buy online at fundingchange.ca slash curlmanitoba or scan the QR code on your screen right now. A replay coming up of Jennifer Jones's last shot. Well, maybe not. That was a replay of her preparing to slide down the ice to sit in the hack to make her last shot. We like to give our viewers a full sense of what that shot involved. <laughs> so, uh, the two did go on the scoreboard, so it is Jones 2, Laws 1. Um, even with a deuce, the Laws team can take their turn to breathe a sigh of relief. There will be more than one deuce scored in this game, so uh, that's not a disaster and uh, a little fortunate not to have given up the three. Um, and here we go again. Center guard by Jones, right around it by Laws. And number three, game still very much on. And the Jones team no now line. will follow. Whereas there are very few degrees, if any, in the curling community, Jennifer has said okay. we don't want any degrees of separation between these stones. Lauren Lementine, though, coming up uh, lighter than expected. Yeah. Two yellow stones on the center line. Cannot yet be moved. Kristen McCush with her second stone of this third end. pretty much to the Scotty's logo on the button while we watch Emily or Mackenzie Zacharias with her first shot of this end. We can report to you that that opening end, uh, Peterson was forced to a single point. Like Ackland has scored two, so Ackland leads 2-1. 
and has several rocks in play in the third end. Aquin needs to win to force a tiebreaker game. Mackenzie Zacharias now with her draw. Past the guards, but she will overcurl and she will rub the rock at the top of the forefoot and roll to the side of the one uh, just back of the tee line. And we'll also jump over and tell you that uh, Lisa McLeod playing Darcy Robertson uh, has scored a four on the second end. So the McLeod team leads the Robertson team 4-1 after two. Chill officer is called for, called upon for a intern hit. Hits and sticks uh, would have wanted to roll away a little bit. Even a little bit of a roll would have had yellow push the red across the center line. There's now a pocket, more like a basket of red rocks, ready to accept this incoming stone from Emily Zacharias, her second of the end. The call is to put it right into that pocket. In turn from hard Zacharias. Hard, Lauren. Hard, Lauren. Really hard, Lauren. Oh, really pardon hard, me. Lauren. They played really uh, really a hard, bit of an really upweight really shot. Okay. A little hit and roll. Hoping to roll, did not. I think so, yeah. And Law is very much pleased with the idea of playing that exact role, getting Jill Officer to just cross the center and roll to the center line. Kristen McCush indicates that really weight may be up a little. Hard. Hard. Sweep hard to get it to the center, but she will bang it onto that red rock on the back of the button and bounce it out. Difficult to say whether or not that red stayed in play as a biter. We'll learn about that later. That's on. We'll learn about that now. It is on. Carly Burgess, the first shot of the end. Straight, 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 straight. Hard. Whoa, 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 whoa. Snaps as it comes to the top of the rings. Into the eight foot on the front of that red Laws stone. Still room for Laws to rub and roll to the center. Jocelyn Peterson, Peterman's rather uh, first rock. Just hack weight, trying to come ever so slightly inside the face yes. of the target yes. yellow rock. There's gonna be a lot of movement in this path. Does hit and roll away. I thought I did, and you held it really good. Carly Burgess with her second stone of this end. Looking for hit and roll. Okay. Won't get it. Nine seven. She said yes. Yeah. Try and roll it in. 
So now it is the Team Laws turn to try to play that role. And for the first time in this end to start to lock in the idea of scoring multiple points. So she changes the call midstream, roll out a wee bit, making it more difficult at least for the Jones team to play the hit and roll. I mean, I can chase this without much risk. Yeah. Even if I pick it out. Yeah. I was trying to, do I have any on this side? A sliver? So we know from having watched previous games that Jennifer Jones with the hack weight she talked about could probably miss that top guard by, I'm not going to say a foot, but uh, certainly by eight or nine inches and make the contact on the red in the forefoot. Talks it through a little more with the sweepers. Like ten, like our normal ten, ten and a half. Confirms the decision that she'll play the hit and roll off that red laws stone in the top corner of the eight foot. As it comes to the hog line, it is going to curl to the outside of that rock. Will stay in play as third stone, effectively bringing that biter completely out of the equation. Caitlin Laws is taking an extra six inches of ice, knowing that uh, there's a lot of movement from the hog line in, but knowing equally that if she rubs the redstone that is currently shot, it's going to make Jennifer Jones's job with her last one far too easy. So she's trying to bend right around her current shot rock and at least get partially extra. covered uh, the in, the, in the forefoot, but not behind the T-line. That rock will be going sideways in its last four feet of travel. Me too. Once again, she can probably clear Line now set. the red rock at the top of the forefoot by as much as a foot. Down, so we'll see yes, if she's yes. got that yes, figured out properly. It is really moving. going to yep, 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 curl yep, yep, tight yep, to the red, in fact, hard. it's going to snap over and just touch it. Can't even say it rubbed it, it just touched the back of it on the way past. I think the expression is papered it, but just barely. So Jennifer Jones will now play a hit. So close to perfection. Out, you heard her say it, she'll pick it out. Concede a two if Caitlin can make her shot back to the forefoot. Jones out turned her final stone of the end. 
she's going to come past. She does hit that last stone. So Caitlin Laws lies one. Needs to follow, make the same shot, draw to the forefoot. The ooh you heard from the crowd was in relation to an uncharacteristic miss in the Ackland Peterson game by Megan Walter with her last one, giving Beth Peterson the opportunity to make an open hit for two to go ahead three to two after three ends. She got a little more roll than she expected, but that is two points for Peterson. They're ahead 3-2. And here comes Caitlin Laws's draw, down exactly the same path, except she's taken an extra two inches of ice just to be on the safe side. This outturn draw needs to be in the forefoot when it comes to rest. Laws has scored one, tied the game at two all. This is a second point this end. Kristen McCush has her tiptoes up as usual, brushing it the whole length of the ice, and the weight is perfect. And they do put it fully in the forefoot, almost biting, biting the button. It is a large button, however. So a deuce for Laws after giving up the deuce to Jones on the second. It is a 3-2 lead, Laws over Jones. As we go to a break, we'll be back with our fourth end in a moment. We hope you're enjoying this Manitoba Championship Curling, brought to you by Seagram's 83, Manitoba's favorite Canadian whiskey. At McMunn and Yates, we've always believed that good neighbors make for better communities. McMunn and Yates has everything you need for your next project, right at your fingertips. And McMunnandYates.com will always be there, ready to help. When life gets busy, getting everything done can be tough. With PharmaSafe's mobile prescription service, order your prescriptions right from your phone so they're ready when you are. Download the PharmaSafe app today. Live well with PharmaSafe. Back in the East St. Paul Arena, it is Championship Curling Manitoba style, the Curl Manitoba 2023 Scotties Tournament of Hearts presented by Rocky Mountain Equipment. Jennifer Jones trails Caitlin Laws 3-2 as the fourth end begins. To recap, in the opening end, Laws could have played a draw 4-2, elected to play uh, a not quite so easy double kill for a possible four and got the worst possible result, rolled across the face of the second stone got only the single point. Jennifer Jones in her place on the second end, tried a double kill for three, got only two. And here now on the third end, uh, Caitlin Laws has made the draw to the forefoot circle for her deuce. So Laws leads 3-2 over Jones, playing now in the fourth end. And they put the guard up on the center line. And for the first time, Jennifer Jones is putting up a corner guard simply by reason of the fact that the red guard placed there by Kristen McCush is far Mine's enough tight. away from the rings that it really isn't a guard at all. So Jennifer's going to try to build her deuce with hammer in the conventional here. way, Make making use depth. at good some depth. point good in depth. the end depth. of a corner depth. guard. And the marker most teams have used throughout the week for what Jennifer referred to as a usable guard has been uh, in the proximity of that Rocky Mountain Equipment I Case did. IH logo. Yeah, 
McCush with her second shot, an outturn draw around that guard. Starts to dive across as it passes the guard. Won't quite make it to the center line, but a couple of guards up the center, and Jennifer will now use those. Little bad luck for Darcy no Robertson over on the next sheet. She played no a straight heart. tap. If she'd have got the they angle got right, the she house. might have been hitting for four. Ended up with only two. So that game is 4-3 for McLeod over Robertson. Heart. Peterson did get two Blue in the Ackland Peterson heart, game, heart. so Peterson leads that game 3-2. Okay. Okay. Jennifer wanted to be deep into the front half of the rings, probably to the forefoot. Comes up short, leaves Caitlin the opportunity to go around to the forefoot. It's Jill Officer in the hack. Line's good. Weight's good. We may be seeing yeah. the wide yeah. path to the center line to the button running a little more slowly than has been the case so far this week. The time on Jill's draw. No, it's the same, 15-6, 15-5. So it's a nice slick path. And that 15-5 hog to hog puts the rock right into the front of the forefoot circle, biting into the forefoot. Jennifer now clearing guards with the sixth rock of the end, which makes it open season on guards, even if they're touching the center line. Yep. Whoa, whoa, no, no, whoa. no, no. It's still, it's She'll get the outside peeled off. No contact on either of the two guards closer to the rings. Long split center. Caitlin will try to replace it. She'd like it to be a, a little better, splitting the center line. We'll just give you a hog to hog time on this outturn side of the sheet. That draw that gets just past the Munn and Yates sign was nearly 18 seconds hog to hog. So it's what we've been seeing all week. At the McMahon and Yates sign, it's just a little more than halfway out from the rings to the hog line. Mackenzie Zacharias in turn hit. Yep. Wants to rip off yep. both yep. red guards, roll Hard. away to the side. You gotta roll it, gotta roll it. Makes contact with one, makes Good. contact with the second, rolls it out, yellow, nice. over to a corner guard position. Now it's Jocelyn Peterman's turn to good, place the guard. Easy early, Jocelyn. Easy early. Got to curl a bit, but yeah, Jill's rock. Got to curl. Curl. Keep going. Gotta keep the going. curl keep going. really keep does going. start to happen hard. from about here. Hard, Jill, hard. If the weight, hard. that rock will get hard. to the center line. Not quite, though. Didn't quite have the weight to get there. And Jones Whatever has a straight like. run now. Yep. 
She wants to get almost Hard. to the nose of this rock. Hard. You gotta go. Roll it. it. Does roll just curls just slightly across center and pushes it straight back. Ticks that red and it sits still behind a guard that's moved over a little bit. A better guard situation and a, and a rock solidly in the twelve or the forefoot. Carly Burgess yeah. would like that one back. She um, was kind of talking to herself. She was just yeah. a little soft on the release. Like she got to the broom, but the rock was moving almost out of her hand. So with a couple of guards in play up the yeah, center line, them. Jocelyn Peterman is asked to throw her draw Bird into the top uh, of the rings, Four. eight foot Four. into the forefoot. And now it's going to make a hard left turn. There's no daylight between the inside edge of that yellow rock and the outside edge of the red guard on the McMahon and Yates sign. So this has to be very precise. And Jennifer is assuring Carly that even yes. though the look from the hack isn't very attractive, she knows this path. Yes. So she'll curl to it. She's hoping to Hard. run the yellow into roll the it. red, just roll delivered, it. roll the yellow away. Okay, Does okay. make the contact. Sorry. Requested. Don't know how we get there, but gonna have to throw the end. Yeah. Probably gonna have to be a little bit. Overbrushed it just a little bit. Yeah. Held it a little bit too straight. Okay. But still an excellent still outcome. Nice. Yep, yeah, sliding just as nice over here. In there. A little straighter on this side? Yeah. Okay. So now it's Caitlin Law's turn to throw first. Yeah, I think I need it. She'll throw for the line that wide in turn draw. I wants to get, you're, you're slid I'm thinking just nice to the top now. of the 12 foot circle. Wanting to put the pressure on Jennifer Jones to force her to take a single point. Just curls up a little bit at the end and cut the center line. The shot stone in behind is about half open. So a hit and roll behind all that clutter at the left hand side of yellow guards is very much in play. She's just throwing board weight, wanting to make certain to keep her shooter in play. For Jones, first stone of the end. She'll want to play past that center line guard just played by Caitlin Laws. Get to the shot stone, roll behind the yellow guards. She does make the contact. And rolls, but stays as much as half open.
almost yeah. three quarters we heard from yep. the hack end, Kristen McCush. In the Ackland Peterson game, Beth Peterson had a hit but rolled out with her shooter, leaving Megan Walter a shot to blank the end, blank the fourth end, which she has successfully done. So Walter will retain the hammer going into the fifth end. The score in that game still being Peterson three, Ackland two. So Caitlin Laws with an outturn hit now past the yellow guards. As you heard her say, she can hear see, see three quarters of it, certainly doesn't want to hit that much of it. Just wants to hit and roll back across center, fully buried behind, behind the two Clean. red guards up the center. Yep. Clean on the Whoa. Easy. Whoa. Still she riding a bit wide. Jill. A bit. Now curls, she's going to get the contact. Will she stay in the rings is the question. She does roll way too far even if she rolls and stays in play. And does roll right out of play. Well, not out of play, it's still alive, but it's certainly out of the rings. Jennifer has a quick look to see if there's any combination of of double bumps that can result in more than a single point. Sees nothing. That's funny with the amount of curl in the ice, Jennifer. Not humorously necessarily said, I don't even know which gap to right. pick to throw it through. So she does throw an eight, uh, Edge of eight foot clearing shot. The blank end happens. It is 3 2. Laws over Jones after four. We'll be back with end number five in a moment. Thank you for joining us for this Manitoba Championship draw brought to you by Seagram's VO. Masterfully blended, distinctly Canadian. At Viterra, we believe in the power of connection. Our world-leading agriculture network connects producers and consumers to supply top quality food ingredients each and every day. Our team takes great pride in working closely with farmers to help feed the world. It's something we've been doing for over 100 years. And as an industry leader, we're dedicated to playing a critical role in meeting the needs of a growing world. Because together, we're stronger and achieve more. Asham Curling Supply. Superior fit, comfort, and performance. Asham Curling Shoes are the best we've ever used. Hi folks, I'm Arnold Asham, and our product is always satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Asham Curling Supplies. That's your best delivery of the day. Back on the center sheet at the East St. Paul Arena. It is the 2023 Curl Manitoba Scotty's Tournament of Hearts presented by Rocky Mountain Equipment. I can swivel in if you want. Caitlin Laws took a bit of a risk on the opening end, had a go for it on an attempt at a double kill for four. Didn't work out, got a single. The two teams traded deuces on ends two and three. Jennifer Jones has just blanked end number four. So Jones holds the hammer as we play now in the fifth. Caitlin Laws has placed the Center guard touching the center line, Lots about halfway in. Looks like a lot of Lauren Lenantine now the Rock, lead for play. Jennifer Jones. Sweep for speed. Wait and she's going to come to the center line for sure. Very nice, Lauren. Perfect spot, that's good. Good, perfect spot. Just slightly across the center line, dead behind that mid-range guard. And now Caitlin will ask for lead Kristen McCush to follow it to draw to the face of that yellow stone that's biting the button. Line's good. Got room. Room. The chess game continues. Room. We've seen this three out of the first four Curl. opening ends. I got it. Curl the whole way. Straight, 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 straight. Straight, hard, hard. 
Puts the sweep on to try to get it past that yellow stone back to behind the button, mostly buried by a couple of guards. Not the shot that Caitlin was looking for. She wanted to be above the yellow stone and it certainly changes the end now. That changes the strategy for Jones. We'll try to come to it. Mac being Mackenzie Zacharias, and she does sweep to get that little bit of curl. Bumps red, and appears to be that red is probably still shot rock. And with a very precise draw here, Jill Officer can sneak in to have her stone lie second as well. heard from the sweepers were just top eight. They're completely right about that. It does curl over to the Yellowstone biting the button. Top button. And now it's Jennifer's turn to try to put one into that pocket on the button. Mackenzie Zacharias, first stone of the end. Does able is able to get it to curl over just a little bit. Yellow lies one, red second shot, yellow third shot, and fourth shot. In a moment, we will have more than 250 pounds of granite clustered around the forefoot. This is going to become fun. going to come up. Jill Officer's draw just a little bit light. Bites the top of the 12-foot circle. Jennifer at the moment has an embarrassment of riches. She's She doesn't care so much whether she can somehow clear the yellow stone close enough to become shot. What she cares about is this stone ending up with the right angle on the red stone, the one just on the button, currently shot rock, which will become a very lonely red stone indeed. Anywhere above it. Anywhere above it. They need this rock to die in. Here it goes. Absolutely is a great shot, isn't it? That is perfect. Any contact, any contact on that Yellowstone at all moves the red rock and leaves Jennifer Jones yellow lying five. Caitlin Laws has taken a timeout in the fifth end. I don't know, we got it. 
watching. I'm not even sure they've taken any timeouts throughout the event. I'm sure they have, but I'll guarantee you none of them have been in the fifth end of the game. And none of them have been with the okay. possibility of the a score of four or even five on the line only yeah, midway yeah. through the end. Is this better? There's no get out of jail shot here. But what they have to think about is a what? setup shot this. Okay. for the one yeah. that comes next because Half this is going to take at least two shots to redistribute the yellow stones in yeah. a way that won't enable Jennifer Jones with some it's ease. It's dragging, so I might just stick there. That's fine. To count Try and plant that. A minimum Keep of the three four points. in there, yeah. That yellow Shouldn't stone, pardon me, the red stone on no. the button, you can just treat Heel. as not even being there because it's going away. It's just a matter of when. So we're going to throw, uh, see Jocelyn Peterman throw a hit. She's going to throw a hit on that guard a rock biting the top 12 foot on the left hand side of center as we look at it trying to run it dead back into the red on the center line she'll kill at least one yellow probably kills a red three yellows stay in play but um, she's much better off by the potential situation of the red stones after this shot we'll see in a moment it is a peterman intern hit straight down the ice trying to keep it straight she's going to get the outside of it she's going to be red onto red does not touch touch the yellow uh, so once again yellow lies one that was the minimum amount of help the Laws team was expecting yep. to get from that shot. Again, although it looks as if it's there, you can treat that red stone at the button in behind the three yellow stones as essentially being invisible because it's not going to be there for long. Carly Burgess. This one's going to start crashing over pretty quickly. It could very easily wreck on the red guard. And just does rub it. So once again, Caitlin looking at how do we get out of trouble here. She's trying to curl almost to the center line and if she taps the yellow back, she probably doesn't contact the red again. Yellow onto yellow, gets rid of one yellow, leaves the yellow shot rock, which it is already, but sits in front of it now. And that's why she's calling board weight. To lessen the risk of touching her red rock that is behind the T line. Crosses the T line, uh, hog line, Kristen with a little bit of sweep. She does get to that stone back, bang, bang. It does remove that red. Two yellows now lying shot, but a much better situation for Caitlin Laws. Jennifer has to deal with the red stone sitting on top of her yellow shot stone. Even though she lies two, the positioning of that red stone is seeing this with weight. trouble. This is a neat call. She's playing an outturn thick hit half. to the inside thick half of the target rock with the expectation that the shooter will come on an angle directly into the side of the red stone at the top of the forefoot. Yes! 
Carly Burgess. She's going to curl to the center line side of the Yellowstone roll right across. And now all of a sudden, if Caitlin Laws can figure out how to get rid of a couple of Yellowstones, the end has shifted completely. She's looking well, at several things, and I would bet sooner or later she's going to look at a run back on a long red guard. Sorry, Resby, all it took was a couple of half shots from Carly Burgess. They were good throws. They just ended up being half shots to turn this end completely around. And that's a uh, medium range run back of about 11 or 12 feet looking at the center guard. So um, no picnic. Caitlin Laws. Jones does have last rock in this end. Keep that in mind. So this is the first of skip stones. Laws throwing Clean. Clean. an in turn hack weight Clean. shot, yes. she called it. Contact Hard. red, red onto yellow. Yellow now may or may not be first or second shot rock. Now clearly from that overhead shot, red lies one. Yellow biting the button, but now a very solitary yellow rock in the rings, a complete change from some time ago. The Red in the back of the, uh, outside the back of the forefoot is the invisible red rock that was biting the button that Barry referred to some time ago. That yellow rock is feeling very lonely. There's, uh, it should feel afraid, very, very afraid. So Jennifer's call now is to play to the yellow. He said with a question in his voice. Correct. She's doing it by coming inside or on the low side of the red rock flanking that yellow stone. Yep. Yep. Oh, really hard. Really hard. So she really approaches hard. the ring, she's cl cleared the guard. She will make contact on the red, she'll make contact on the yellow. Yellow may be counting one now. I would say yes, you are, Jen. So at this stage, Caitlin now with one yeah, stone each. Caitlin Laws with red, like Jennifer Jones with again. yellow. Yeah. Caitlin's looking at a way to, to prevent like Jennifer good. Jones yeah. from scoring two. At the beginning, we promised you interesting ends you throughout the game. Yep. Eight stones in the rings with two stones to come. I think that qualifies as interesting, Resby.
You heard Caitlin, she'd like to get seven eighths high. She just wants to be angled a little bit on the red rock, fully in the eight foot so Mine's that good. it cannot be hit yeah. through to take out the rock that's yeah. on the button. Uh, the whoa, only way whoa, she sees whoa. for Jennifer to score a deuce. Kristen, Kristen. Hard, Kristen. Push, Kristen, everything you got, everything you got, everything you got. Keep going, keep going. Good. And she jiggles that red just a little bit. May well have moved red now to shot rock. From that angle, yes, you would say so. Red does lie one. That's pretty good. It's uh, forced Jennifer to play a big upweight shot. An angle hit into the pile. Which at best gives us a score of one for the yellows. Yeah, we're just trying to get our one. Goes red, Correct. onto red, onto red. Nine and a half, ten. Pushes the red off the button, but uh, there's no way that a second yellow point scores. Final shot of the fifth end, Jennifer Jones trails Caitlin Laws 3-2. Two, four, six, eight, nine rocks in play in the rings. One guard, Jennifer Jones with an in, out, intern hit. She needs the weight on the outside edge of the red stone in the eight foot. Red under red. There we go with the bang, bang, bang. And uh, one yellow stone counts. So after five completed ends, the score is 3-3. Three, three. After five completed ends, Caitlin Laws has last rock, just as she had at the start of the first end. Uh, fair to say, nothing has been accomplished except that the two teams have a much better knowledge of the ice they're playing on, and except to suggest that the second half of this game should be very interesting. Agreed. We'll be back with end number six after the mid-game break. 3-3. Why not? Just watch. Why not? Keep scrolling our slide. Why not? As a broadcaster and Hall of Fame football player, I'm constantly in the lab of life. For 15 years, my friends at Not Auto Corp have been pioneers as well. Why not? Introducing Winnipeg Car Lab. Custom car wraps, graphics, and auto why services. Not? Winnipeg. Why not get in the lab? It means coming together helping one another, being there, showing support. That's community, getting together with your chums you want to curl with. It's important to volunteer, help out as much as we can. I love curling. I love curling. <laughs> RME, proud sponsor of Curl Manitoba and the Scotties Women's Provincials. With 10 locations in Manitoba, RME is your preferred Case IH equipment dealer. RME, right by you. Curling in the small town part of Manitoba is, is really big in the winter. It's something for the community to do and it really brings the community together. We can hold annual events like our bond spiels and our, and our weekly nights. It's really something to do for everyone in the community and can do it from any age. Eat. Meet. Stay. Play. Can Inn's destination centers are your home for hospitality with 10 locations in Manitoba and one in North Dakota. Featuring the finest in accommodations, food and beverage, entertainment, banquet and conference facilities, and so much more. For the best service and best value, your only stop is Ken Ad Inns. Call today at 1-888-33-KEN-AD or visit us right now at KenAdInns.com. Where can you find handmade delicious pizza, classic burgers, scrumptious salads, and the finest Manitoba sourced pressure cooked fried chicken? From small towns to big cities with 38 locations, Chicken Chef is comfort food you can count on. We're your made in Manitoba chicken choice and pizza choice and salad choice. And so, so, so much more. Chicken Chef, bring your appetite. We'll take care of the rest.
Asham Curling Supply. Superior fit, comfort, and performance. Asham Curling Shoes are the best we've ever used. Hi folks, I'm Arnold Asham, and our product is always satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Asham Curling Supplies. That's your best delivery of the day. When life gets busy, getting everything done can be tough. With PharmaSafe's mobile prescription service, order your prescriptions right from your phone so they're ready when you are. Download the PharmaSafe app today. Live well with PharmaSafe. At McMunn & Yates, we've always believed that good neighbors make for better communities. McMunn & Yates has everything you need for your next project right at your fingertips. And McMunnandYates.com will always be there, ready to help. It is the Manitoba Scotties Tournament of Hearts presented by Rocky Mountain Equipment. Coming to you from the East St. Paul Arena, just north of the city of Winnipeg, outside the Perimeter Highway. Inside, a championship curling venue has been created in the Community Hockey Arena, a venue that has had expanded seating included here for the afternoon matchup, the highly anticipated matchup between Jennifer Jones and Caitlin Laws. Caitlin Laws won last rock in the first end on the pregame draw to the button. Took a single point when she tried to, a bit of a high risk shot at a four ender, uh, only got the one. The two teams traded deuces. Jones blanked and Laws was able to force Jones to a single point in the fifth end. So at the end of five, it is 3-3, three, three. game situation exactly as it was at the start of the game. Laws with hammer, only five ends to go now. My name is Resby Coots, privilege for me to be speaking to you on behalf of Curl Manitoba and all of the sponsors of this Wait event, both the provincial curling sponsors Wait and the local host committee sponsors. Wait. We thank all of them for their support. Alongside me is Barry Gorlick. Uh, who I've described earlier in the week, and I sincerely mean a student of both the art and the science of the sport of curling. And uh, and Barry, nice. to use that description, we're seeing um, maybe a, a Picasso in terms of the art, uh, and we're seeing some Einstein-like stuff in terms of the science. You can't have more fun than this if you really appreciate excellence in sport and particularly in the roaring game everything about the games being presented by these two teams is absolutely top drawer the brushing skill the judgment of weight the ability to release the rock in the same way every time and of course as we've discussed already the curling iqs of every player and especially these two skips which as we mentioned at the outset, collectively have 67 years of on ice experience between them. Uh, you like that? It's unmatched, maybe anywhere. A day or so ago, Barry, I talked with a young man here at the arena. Um, a young man I would put in the, without naming, in the category of a very good curler, uh, more than a provincial level curler. Um, a young man who, for example, will be playing in the Viterra Championship in Nipua, uh in a couple of weeks' time. And 
Sorry, he yeah. was sitting here, and I would suggest he was in awe. He was watching what he said were some. He was watching what he said were some very good curlers, and then he said, but what I've seen is the difference between the very good curlers and the great curlers. And of course, in that instance, he was specifically talking about Jennifer Jones, Caitlin Laws, and Jill Officer were the three that he defined as the great curlers among the very good curlers. And, and I hadn't thought of that comparison myself before, but I, I really like it. Raises the whole question of nature, nurture, practice, Malcolm Gladwell, 10,000 hours. I think I can probably answer it best with a story. Uh, Paul Wychuk, a good sports journalist who's now retired and retired in comfort, I think, wrote a piece about Caitlin Laws after she won the gold medal in Beijing with uh, John Morris. Uh, and it was simply this. Through the years as a curling writer and sports junkie, Paul had been approached by hundreds of parents, moms and dads, this. asking them to keep an eye out for their son or daughter on the curling sheets because they had something special. And Paul's response in the article was to say, if I had a nickel for every time a parent asked me to do that, I would have been a wealthy man. Keith Laws was one of those parents. I wish I'd listened to him. Yeah. That's the late father of Caitlin, who was um, committed, I'm not going to use the word obsessed, committed to making sure that his young daughter uh, had every opportunity to excel in the sport. Uh, but she brought a passion from the age of four that has continued to build. Uh, many of us in this room have been wandering around curling rinks for a lot of years and Caitlin inevitably shows up in every city rink at various times of the year just to throw rocks all by herself, even as a gold medalist. That's passion, that's commitment, and that makes the difference. And she's standing right beside another person, her former skip, Jennifer Jones, with that level of commitment. And if I may say so, even a few more years experience than Caitlin has. So second of second stones for Jill Officer. She's going to play a back weight tap on that yellow rock. As she continues to jiggle the yellows around, leaving her own red rock in the back of the forefoot circle. The other thing I would say is that you say that all out? winter long she'll show up in a curling rink wherever. Are we, um, we both know that through the entire summer months of this past season as these two teams formed and began to make their preparations, both the Jennifer Jones team and the Caitlin Laws team uh, were very present all summer long as members of the Cargill Curling Training Center out in hat? Morris. Um, one of the few, if any others exist, I'm not aware, uh, curling rinks, certainly in Manitoba, that operates year round. Uh, with yeah. championship ice and uh, and they spent a lot of time at the training center in Morris through the summer preparing for the fall when they would begin to prepare for the season. They had no choice and they want to excel. Uh, Caitlin yeah. and Jennifer parted ways as recently as March of 2022. Whoa. That's only 10 months ago. Whoa, no, so no, they no, both Lord, built Lord, new Lord. teams in six or seven or eight months. Normally it takes a year or two or three or maybe never for a team to develop the combination of combined low, skill, okay, combined thought yeah. processes, combined communication skills, and I have to say collegiality, which is something the late great Ken Watson wrote yes, about as early as 1957. And these two teams have pulled all of that together well, and solid. risen right to the top in less yeah. than a year. It's actually pretty yeah. remarkable. So we saw Carly Burgess pick that red laws stone out of the back of the forefoot. She could see about a third of it hit what she could see. And now Jocelyn Peterman plays the yellow stone that was partially buried, does roll back open in the back of the 12 foot circle. Jennifer's just gonna play that stone behind the tee line, try to get a little bit of an inside roll. But again, being cautious on the weight choice, just board weight about 11 and a half seconds hog to hog. 
so that the brushers can do their magic and try to control its movement in the path. Carly yeah. Burgess, final stone of the Whoa. end. Whoa! No, Lauren. Go, 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 go. Lauren, 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 Lauren. She nice. is going to hit, roll a little bit away. Not much, does sit second shot back there. Stroll in front of that other Jones one, needed to have that rock stick in the right. rings to keep a pair of stones counting, given that there are the two red stones at the top of the 12 foot. But it is Jocelyn Peterman's second stone of the end, the final yeah. of third stones here. Whoa, whoa. And she will play the whoa. try attempt to get to the yellow stone in the top four foot, hit Hard. and roll over and stay Hard. Hard. in the rings, but she's not going to curl up enough. She does bang it just behind and roll right out of the rings. That's not behind. In fact, it's wide open in that hole. Over on the game I'm between totally Ackland and yeah, Peterson, yeah. the game that will that's, dictate that's whether or not we have a tiebreaker yeah, like draw tonight at 8 o'clock. Yeah. Uh, as we told you, way early on, Peterson was forced to take a single point on the first end. Uh, since that, the teams have traded deuces. But it's a line shot. Like, i got to come off that red, right? So it is 5-4 like for, for Peterson playing the seventh end. Jones looking at trying to get a guard in play. Needs to be reasonably tight to the rings and two feet off the center line to fill the port that is available to Caitlin to remove shot stone from the forefoot. She comes to the hog line, she does begin to curl across. She's gonna have to play now for a rub to roll back into the space and does exactly that. Jones lies too, so with no the, obvious way in which to heel. remove yeah. Yeah. both of those stones. It's decision time for the Laws this, team. Caitlin's kinda, looking at yeah, the possibility of trying to beat Jennifer Jones yeah. Yeah, I to like the it. right side of the You're button seeing, like, as we view it here. Yeah. And play the hole. She's also seriously well, looking well, at well, whether or not play, there really is space between those two yellow rocks that we see just at the top of the ring. I don't know what else to play, Josh. Like. I like it. It gives That's you options That's a comment you won't hear one. from any top level this skip really very often. It. I don't yeah. know what yeah, else to like play. It. Jennifer has Caitlin on the back foot at the moment. She so might even touch this up. So yeah, I like it. Yep. Okay. Like right here. Yeah, I'm wondering what, what turn you play though. At it. Oh, okay. I like there. Thin as we can. With the end. Yep. So it's not so much trying to go between them, but in fact to hit both of them as she goes between them. The momentum of her throwing rock can oftentimes carry straight through a gap like that if she clicks the inside edges of each of the guards as she runs through. I think she'd be happy with just touching the center line one first, redirecting, probably coming off the back of the other one, pushing it away and rolling into the rings. We'll see as she throws. Um, That's the hardest throw she's made all week. The big weight in turn hit. She's going to go bang, bang, and bang, and makes that beautiful, what you would have to call a triple kill. Uh, and all of a sudden, two red rocks at the top of the rings and a, a yellow one in the black. Here's that replay. Look at here. I'm sorry. All I can do is laugh. This just makes me happy. 
unbelievable. First of all, no club curler would actually see that shot. Second, no club curler would be able to throw that shot. Third, the amount of force Caitlin Laws, who can't weigh more than 110 pounds soaking wet, injected into that 42 pound piece of granite is absolutely extraordinary. I didn't have a time on it, but I think that was probably a six second hack to hack throw. And the interesting thing is, as she went through the two and got to the one in the forefoot, she was almost unlucky not to stick on that one in the forefoot. She did hit and roll just out of the rings. Jones now faces second and third. I mentioned Russ Howard having many times said Caitlin Laws was the best third in the world. He hasn't had a chance to see her much yet in her new role as Skip, but uh, stay tuned. So there we see the situation. Two yellows. Yellow at the top of the rings is second shot. No logical double kill there. There's a double there uh, for the last end of the game when you have to score two to tie, but uh, not at this stage of the game when the shot stone is wide open in the back eight foot. The risk of uh, missing the back stone on a double attempt run back is at least as great as the risk of jamming it. So uh, no need to risk that at this stage in the game. Need to come right to that rock, get to the nose of it, stick on the nose of it. And so after forcing Jones to one in the fifth, Jones forces Laws to one in the sixth. She'll be very happy with the one given that uh, there was the dramatic triple kill, two guards and a rock in the forefoot. Uh, they were in some trouble until then. Caitlin Laws leads Jennifer Jones 4-3 after six completed ends in the championship round game of the 2023 Manitoba Scotties Tournament of Hearts presented by Rocky Mountain Equipment. We'll have end seven momentarily. Today's sponsor, PharmaSafe. Canada's community pharmacy is proud to support Canada's community game. At McMunn and Yates, we've always believed that good neighbors make for better communities. McMunn and Yates has everything you need for your next project right at your fingertips. And McMunnandYates.com will always be there, ready to help. You can win a pair of tickets for the 2023 Tim Hortons Briar in London or the 2023 BKT Tires and OK Tire Men's Worlds in Ottawa plus $500. Or maybe equip your team with a set of four of Asham's new Ultra Force brushes. And at the same time, support the Manitoba Curling Hall of Fame and Museum and Curl Manitoba's Curling for Life Endowment Fund. Raffle tickets are available now. One for $5, four for $10, 10 for $20. Buy online at fundingchange.ca slash curlmanitoba or scan the QR code on your screen right now. Back into the East St. Paul Arena, the Manitoba Scotties Tournament of Hearts. The number one seed, Caitlin Law, is the number two seed, Jennifer Jones, facing off both undefeated. Final round of the championship round. One of them will finish eight and zero. One of them will finish seven and one. The eight and zero team will have a bye to tomorrow afternoon's final game. Yeah. Spectacular shot by Caitlin Laws to save the end on the sixth end, a rock buried in the forefoot. She threw a yellow or threw a heater Just through between two guards, Tommy. killed them both, carried through, took the rock out of the forefoot, ended up Tommy. being forced to a one, but it was an end that very much Barry Gore looked, no, looked like it could be a, a steel end for Jones. Yep. Uh, all chill, of a sudden, chill, chill. so no, Law's very content to take the one. More than content. Uh, shot of the game so far. 
and uh, given the way the scoring has gone so far with the level of shot making, Caitlin knows that she's going to have an opportunity to get a multiple score in one of the remaining ends. Her focus right now is uh, having snuck away with a single point in the last end to do her best to force Jennifer Jones to only one in this end. Laura Nunantin with her second shot of the end. Uh, one of those shots that had Jennifer just confused exactly, well confused may be the wrong word, but certainly unclear exactly what was the best way to approach it comes to rest. Nestled against the red stone, nestled against the yellow stone in the forefoot, and Caitlin Laws uh, with every intention of nestling red against yellow. A string of pearls, heavy pearls, but pearls nonetheless. This is playing out uh, in the way, as we mentioned before, many mixed doubles games play out, and do not forget, folks, that uh, Caitlin Laws has an Olympic gold medal in the discipline of mixed doubles as well. She knows all about stringing rocks along the center line. Jill Officer, just a little bit light with that shot. One rock on the center line, one frozen right beside it. What do you guys like? Go here. Sure. See that, or we rip those. Yeah, we rip. We probably blank. It's always coming back. Okay, yeah, let's draw. I like to draw. Full eight. Interesting, Mackenzie Zacharias's opinion. If we if we play the peel, we're going to blank the end. Okay, line's decent. Just top eight. Yep. Removing cover at this Rip. level of play virtually guarantees yeah, a blank unless yep. the team trying to blank the end gets a bit unlucky with a jam. But the yellow guard, Dari Rock, crashing toward the center. Just rubs again the back of the guard and uh, straightens a wee bit but curls into the button to lie to. Caitlin Law is content to follow it at this point. She can see a uh, high weight hit on the top red removing all three yellow stones so uh, she's quite content to be on top of the yellows over on the other side. Being surrounded by red stones over top of them, those two yellow stones we're counting at the moment will be susceptible in a variety of ways. Comes up a little short of what was desired. This is getting now one stone at least too cluttered up front for Jennifer's liking. So she's going to open everything up. Two red rocks should disappear here. The yellow may, one red will stay. Yes. Mackenzie Zacharias throwing the big weight hit up the center line. Ah! And did, just as I said, two reds disappear, a yellow drove rolls right away, one red stays on the center line. On the nose. You roll off, it's okay. Ten. And now Jocelyn Peterman. She'll throw the in-turn oh, hit oh, past that red oh. at the top of the rings, hoping to kill a yellow, a pair of yellows. Doesn't kill them both, but sits in front of the one that remains. That was 
half a millimeter from disaster, she like this just one? papered that red guard on the way by, or that red stone at the top of the 12 foot. So as Carly Bird just settles in the hack, we look over at Cheat C and uh, uh, the Ackland team does have shot rock biting the button. There are two yellow rocks in the forefoot in front of it. There's a red guard on the center line, a yellow guard on the red guard. There's a red rock biting the back of the 12 foot and a big weight hit coming in that sheet. So back to Carly Burgess. She's going to tick the outside of that yellow, rolls right out of the rings. And I can tell you that Megan Walter throwing the last yeah. stone over there uh, basically picked, big weight pick on a yellow stone, pushed it across, took the other yellow stone out, and now lies three. And Ackland okay. has last rock Nine. with both, yeah. with one skip stone to come for each team. Back here now, Jocelyn yeah. Peterman. Throwing an out turn hit up the center line, oh, wants to whoa. hit red onto yellow. Not going to get quite to the center, but does make yep. the contact yeah, she wants. Roll Rolls over a little bit. I don't know if it's the same number of yellow rock, uh, but if it is, it's had several ends now where it has just been feeling all alone, Resby. <laughs> Surrounded by reds. Oh, Charlie Lauren, Burgess. Lauren. This one is an intern hit. Hard, Lauren. Whoa, straight, 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 straight. Picks a pair of red rocks out of the top of the rings. Jennifer Jones sweeps that red right out of play. And now, all of a sudden, yellow lies too. Remember, Jennifer Jones has last rock here in the seventh end. Caitlin Laws settles in the hack with her first of two. She wants to hit and roll behind cover. Clean! 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 No, 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 no! Jill, yes, hard! Hard! No roll, no roll. Big roll. She called no roll, but by that time they had lost it. Jennifer Jones now can play an out turn hit. She can roll to the center. She can roll Carly's way, which is to the right as we see it, roll over to the two in the back outside the rings. You can be aggressive on this, Lauren. Captures over there. We're gonna go back to the other sheet of ice where Megan Walters delivering her last stone. Beth Peterson made a hit. Stuck to bite in the button. Walter has played a shot to pick it out again. She rubs on one of her own, but does score two. So Ackland leads Peterson over there. Five, f uh, now six, five. Jennifer Jones's out turn hit will come to the nose, but no roll either direction. He was hoping to roll fully into the 12 foot in order to lie second or first. Uh, it was essentially a nose hit, so this gives Caitlin Laws the opportunity to try to get out of the possibility of giving up a deuce by hitting and rolling in behind her own guard, which is uh, just at the top of the 12 foot ring. And this late in the game, they know exactly how this rock should react. Clean. Clean. Oh, clean. 
Trenton oh, Laws with an out turn, asking Jill Officer to get that rock to curl if she can. But she's not going to be able to. She is going to hit. She is going to roll right away to the point where Jennifer Jones will have just a draw that needs to be full 12 foot, bite the 8 foot for the deuce. better for speed. Oh yeah. A Jennifer Jones draw for two. While we wait for that shot to be delivered, we can give you a little update on Darcy Robertson, Lisa McLeod. We told you early on McLeod had scored a four to lead by a score of 4-1. Um, that four, however, was followed by a two, a one, a three, and a one by Robertson. So uh, Robertson playing now in the seventh end, leads by a score of 8-4. Lies three Is it with heavy? Lisa McLeod going Favorite to throw her last one. Yes. Hard line. So they're going to get past that top guard. It will slide a little deep of the T line, but uh, it is a two on the board. Uh, Jennifer Jones goes back ahead of Caitlin Laws by a score of 5-4. Today's sponsor, Sunrise Credit Union. Building a brighter future together. RME, proud sponsor of Curl Manitoba and the Scotties Women's Provincials. With 10 locations in Manitoba, RME is your preferred Case IH equipment dealer. RME, right by you. Where can you find handmade delicious pizza, classic burgers, scrumptious salads, and the finest Manitoba sourced pressure cooked fried chicken? From small towns to big cities with 38 locations, Chicken Chef is comfort food you can count on. We're your made in Manitoba chicken choice and pizza choice and salad choice. And so, so, so much more. Chicken Chef, bring your appetite. We'll take care of the rest. It is the 2023 Curl Manitoba Scotties Tournament of Hearts presented by Rocky Mountain Equipment. We're in the East St. Paul Arena. And just to put a finish on the Guys, story on. of the Robertson McLeod end that I was speaking go, about as go, we go, went go. to break, keep going, keep going, keep going. McLeod did make her draw to bite the button facing three. So that game is at 8-5, playing eight number eight and number eight. Now we see Jennifer Jones as the first one into the rings. Leading by one, oh, five, one. four. Wait, skid. Laws with last rock, she'll set a corner guard. She's asked Kristen McCush to set up a fairly yeah, tight so corner good. guard, tight to the rings that is. And once again, as we've said earlier, the guard placed right on that RME logo. Getting full value for their title sponsorship, I might add. Presenting sponsorship. Oh, it is, you. of course, the title Mine's sponsorship here. belongs to Scotty's. Four feet tight. Split center. A much appreciated, very long-term sponsorship. Mine's good. You mean there's a business side to curling as well? Anything. I thought we were just doing this for fun. Well, it has been fun watching some of this great, great nice. Manitoba cool. women's curling. That yellow rock in the center of the rings is now covered by a yellow Lauren Lenantine guard cutting the center line halfway out, maybe just not quite. Kristen McCush now going around the guard to the rock at the top of the forefoot. Hard, hard, hard. Really nice. Great 
Wonderful shot. This is not a replay of an earlier end, ladies and gentlemen. This is just the way, strategically and tactically, top teams have an end unfold. They're not afraid of rocks in the rings. They're not afraid of trying to figure out angles. They're most certainly not afraid of having the center filled with granite, knowing that when needed, they can rearrange those rocks with a proper hit. Wants that rock to curl up to the corner of the red, does exactly that. Okay. Yeah, nose is close, hair high. Nose or hair high. Jill Officer doing what she does best, the hit. to be a little bit high on this rock. She'll drive it back on just such a small angle. She'll go pick and move the yellow rock back in the forefoot. Red rock is about half buried. Effortless power. Perfect accuracy. Changes the complexion of the end. Once again, for another time entirely. So Jennifer Jones asked Mackenzie Zacharias to draw two forefoot, try to get to the face of the Yellowstone in the forefoot area, but she's not going to curl up quite enough. Curls a bit as it dies, but does sit wide open, and a nose hit would kill both. A little inside roll is also a possible. Caitlin giving Jill Officer just two inches of ice on more of a control more. weight hit. Down. Four. Four. Need the strong Four. sweep. Some concern that it will curl up and touch the red yep, yep, yep. has done exactly that. So now the question is, can it be pushed into the corner of the 12-foot the circle? Okay. Okay, no, cannot. Showcases a... Scotty's logo over there quite nicely. Ten. Carly Burgess with a hit. She's gonna curl across the face of the red, will push it straight back past her own yellow. We've certainly said this before, Jones without last rock lies three. Laws asking Peterman to play a hit to remove a couple of them. get to the nose of it, she'll run it straight back, jams it straight back. Needed to curl up just a little bit more. Probably just the nose. Which turn do you like? The end? Sad? I think this will curl. Carly Burgess, second stone of the end. She's looking for a nose hit. Coming at it from the out turn side. Get a little bit of an inside roll. Try and hang over here. 
actually. Double is easier that way. Try it this way. Roll right out. It's good. Feel. So you heard her say a roll right out is okay. Wants to get rid of two yellows. Looks to me like that angle is such that perfectly thrown it might contact all three. But she's not going to curl up enough. She's probably going to drive the yellow across them. Yellow moves them both. That triple probably was there, Barry, if she'd hit just a little bit more of it. Agreed. That said, she won't be worried about that yellow rock at the back of the um, eight foot. It does mean, though, that this is going to be another end where Laws is going to take a score. The only question being whether forced to a, to a single or somehow still being able to fashion a skip's deuce. Jennifer Jones with an out turn draw. Line's good, it's a wait, wait, wait only, line's good. Uh, Lauren's up, line's okay. Go ahead, copy, get over curl. Sweep for speed, yeah, sweep for speed, it's gonna over curl. Copy. See, Caitlin has already come to the home end. They're uh, recognizing that time is not desperate at this point in time, but they sit uh, with two rocks yet to come in this end uh, with about eight minutes left, which would allow four minutes an end, which can be plenty unless it's a very complex end. So, so Lars will throw an intern hit. Looking to kill a couple. Going to overcurl, roll across, leaves that yellow stone on the button. I'll make sure I'm like a 10. Jennifer wanting to hit this one right on the nose, force Caitlin to play the okay. rock on the button for a single point. This is looking very much to play out to be a single point for Laws, 5-5 five, five after eight. All to play for, a two-end game. So we'll see in a moment, it is a Jennifer Jones hit. Needs to get it to curl up to the nose of this red stone. She's going to be able to do just that. Does make the nose contact. And Caitlin Laws needs to throw an yeah. intern hit. Needs to make contact on the nose or sufficiently on the nose to stay within the four foot full eight foot area. Just looking at Jill Officer with the very familiar to her view of Caitlin Laws in the hack. How many thousands of times has she done that? Clean. 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 Easy. Easy clean. Caitlin clean. Laws with clean. the intern hit, trailing oh. down the ice, clean. curling nicely clean. to the center line, to the nose of the rock on the button. She will hit solidly on that rock, barely moves. It takes the single point and it does tie the game at 5-5. So we'll go to the ninth, tied 5-5 and the uh, two end game Barry Gorlick referred to now has Jennifer Jones with last rock uh, in the first end of that two next two. It's gonna be a dandy finish, 5-5, Laws Jones.
at East St. Paul. We'll be back in just a moment. Thank you for joining us for this Manitoba Championship Draw, brought to you by Seagram's VO. Masterfully blended, distinctly Canadian. You can win a pair of tickets for the 2023 Tim Hortons Briar in London or the 2023 BKT Tires and OK Tire Men's Worlds in Ottawa, plus $500. Or maybe equip your team with a set of four of Asham's new Ultra Force brushes. And at the same time, support the Manitoba Curling Hall of Fame and Museum and Curl Manitoba's Curling for Life Endowment Fund. Raffle tickets are available now. One for $5, four for $10, 10 for $20. Buy online at fundingchange.ca slash curlmanitoba or scan the QR code on your screen right now. Curling in the small town part of Manitoba is, is really big in the winter. It's something for the community to do and it really brings the community together. We can hold annual events like our bond spiels and our, and our weekly nights. It's really something to do for everyone in the community you can do it from any age. We're back. The East St. Paul Arena. 2023 Manitoba Scottish Tournament of Hearts presented by Rocky Mountain Equipment. Jennifer Jones now in a tie game. Jennifer, Caitlin Law is taking a single to tie it at 5-5. If we jump across to have a look at sheet C, uh, first big break in the game. <coughs> a little bit of drama as the uh, Peterson Stone uh, trickled through, not exactly sure what the combination of results was. We were focused here at the Laws-Jones game. But we can tell you that the net result was an Ackland steal of two. One, that seven, gives Pretty high. Ackland a f an 8-5 lead playing in number nine. Peterson with the hammer. Okay. Okay. Ackland okay. needs to win this game. If she I'm defeats sorry. Peterson, they both down. finish with equal records. Yeah. Of five wins and three losses and those equal records mean the two will come back on the ice this time at center ice here in the arena at eight o'clock tonight so uh, stay tuned for that possibility center guard a rock in the top of the eight, yeah, 12 foot one red rock behind the rings. Jones playing to go around at Law's center guard. They do not want this rock behind the tee line. And it is not, it is squarely on the tee line, overburied behind the red rock. Caitlin will follow. Line's good. Copy. Line's great. Wait up four. Wait there. Line's great. Top On top button. T line. Still. The higher the better though. Let it work if you can. Easy, easy, easy. You're okay. Let it die. That rock just dies into the button, nestles up against the Yellowstone. And Jennifer now will rip off that center line guard. Taking no chances knowing that she either wants to score a deuce or blank right. and take Hammer into the 10th end. Guard. Guard. Yeah. Get there. 
Chill, officer. Yep, gotta go. Gotta go. Looking for a guard. More, more, more. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Tight to the center line. Does exactly that. Or Emily Mackenzie Zacharias really are, guys. Really are. is going to really are. cross her hip. Going to get a little past the nose. No, she doesn't get to the nose. Rolls back to cover her own. Jocelyn Peterman, you heard and saw Caitlin's description. She wants to draw, uh, basically just rub go. the center line side of the red rock on the button and nestle over on top of the yellow one. Doesn't get to the center the way she wanted to, but won't be unhappy like with that. Hard? The red rock in behind the top one is actually overlapping the yellow rock just enough that it's difficult to make a clean Please. contact yes. with the top red rock without moving yes. the yellow rock at least a bit. The yellow one is likely to move an inch or two off yes. the center line. Yes. Snap yes. curl at the end. Again, you heard Caitlin say we need to unlock them. She needs to be able to, at some point, make a hit that will run yellow onto yellow, and with that red sitting as it does, uh, that's not possible right now. So the intern draw heads this way. It's a little more than draw weight. It will come to the nose and tap the yellow, push the red back. Now there's an interesting result, I think an unanticipated result. Completely unanticipated. I'm seeing hack. That rock rolling open out there allows uh, Caitlin Laws to look at that side to spring in off that yellow stone to the rock on the button. No question. Jennifer Jones is knowing yep, yep, yep. that she has to get rid of the red rock that is lying second at the moment, recognizing oh, that there's going to be Lauren, 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 Lauren. Go, go, the go, other go, side go, of go, the go, sheet go. come into play, likely with okay, the yep. next law stone. Yep. Laws, though, not really yes. able to wait any longer to make a play on her red okay. rock. So it's going to take a chance, in yep. effect, on tapping it up into scoring position, moving the yellow stone on the button back just a little bit, but still acting as a wall behind what will become her shot stone, leaving her shooter on the center line available for her last one. Okay, slow down. Clean. 
Lines. Whoa. Stay close for line. Whoa. Kristen. Go on the yellow. Yellow, yellow, straight. This rock simply isn't moving. Trying to get past the red now to this yellow stone. Pushes red over to okay. sit biting. The top of the 12 foot circle has probably taken the hit and roll away on the outside yellow. A bit of a disaster because it actually rolled only into third shot rock. So yep. the Jones team there. lies one two at the moment and can put a cap on it. So again, you heard our expert color commentator, Jennifer Jones, uh, describe exactly what she wants to happen. She wants to draw fully to the button. She wants to be frozen to the yellow rock on the button. Uh, the importance of that positioning really is that uh, Caitlin can still go around the outside to play tap onto the yellow stone on the button. So uh, Jennifer wants to be lying too to take that shot away from her. Trying to get it to curl across this yellow one. She's just going to rub it ever so slightly, rub and roll into that spot. But may have left Caitlin Laws an opportunity. That was really good judgment by Lauren Lenentine. Uh, you can see she isn't hard of hearing, but she was standing right over the rock knowing that it had too much pace, knowing, there, having seen line. the rock yep. path over there the whole game, that it would bust right at the end it. and waited yeah. until the very last second in her best judgment before brushing it to curl in the direction it was traveling. So uh, uh, that's uh, the kind of skill set that uh, Lauren brings to this team. The path of the rock as it travels down the sheet looks much different when you're standing directly over it compared to when you're crouched down behind it or even crouched down in its path as the third does uh, when a rock is approaching the house. Game tied, 5-5, five, five. Laws, Jones. Laws with an intern tap hit. Jones with final stone on this end. Does cross past the guard. She does get to that shot stone. Punches one out the back. Leaves one yellow on the button. Jones will have to play a tap to bite the button. While we contemplate this shot, um, we have received greetings from friends far and wide, Barry, but. Uh, um, we may have gone as far and wide as it's possible now. A text from former Manitoban, Lauren de Pap in New Zealand. Watching, he says, live. Gonna angle to a bit. Enjoying very much back the back, highly uh, anticipated Jones back Laws game. That was back four. Lauren, a native of Grunthal, Manitoba, became a Kiwi many years ago curled for New Zealand in the Olympics, has curled for New Zealand numerous times in men's and senior men's competition. The round of applause you hear relates to the Ackland Peterson game. Beth Peterson had an angle raised to a counting Ackland stone on the forefoot, just slid by it. Ackland stole the point, they win the game. There's gonna be a tiebreaker. So now we see the Jones tap on her stone. She does chat tap it right to the edge of the button. It is Jones with a pair to take a 7-5 lead going to the final, the 10th end. 7-5, Jones over Laws.
as we take this break. We hope you're enjoying this Manitoba Championship Curling, brought to you by Seagram's 83, Manitoba's favorite Canadian whiskey. Where can you find handmade delicious pizza, classic burgers, scrumptious salads, and the finest Manitoba sourced pressure cooked fried chicken? From small towns to big cities with 38 locations, Chicken Chef is comfort food you can count on. We're your made in Manitoba chicken choice and pizza choice and salad choice and so, so, so much more. Chicken Chef, bring your appetite. We'll take care of the rest. When life gets busy, getting everything done can be tough. With PharmaSafe's mobile prescription service, order your prescriptions right from your phone so they're ready when you are. Download the PharmaSafe app today. Live well with PharmaSafe. RME, proud sponsor of Curl Manitoba and the Scotties Women's Provincials. With 10 locations in Manitoba, RME is your preferred Case IH equipment dealer. RME, right by you. Back to the Manitoba Scotties Tournament of Hearts, the match between Caitlin Laws and Jennifer Jones. And for the first time in the entire game, we have a two-point lead. Jennifer Jones with a very delicate tap, a rock that had to be moved about six inches, couldn't be moved a whole lot more than that, and moved it to bite the button to score two. And Jones leads Laws. 7-5 as we play here in the 10th end. First shot of the end, the Jones Rock Little into the top the of the 12-foot circle. Kristen McCush really asked growing. to play corner guard. Oh, oh, oh. She's come to rest just inside the RME logo. Jones will play to the center line to cover. Hard sweep, in fact, to go behind that center line rock. Does go past. Deep to the 12, at the four foot, fully in the four foot. Here we go again, but this has the game on the line. Caitlin is immediately taking advantage of her corner guard. Caitlin? Keep going, keep going, keep going. Good. Four feet. Top 12 foot. Nicely buried. Jones ignoring it intent on filling the center line with yellow stones. And as this rock comes across the hog line to the center line, We can tell you that over on sheet A, we've got a couple of teams who just purely love the game of curling. They purely love the opportunity they have to play one yeah. more end on this great arena ice. Uh, probably for both the McLeod team and the Robertson team, it'll be their last game on arena ice for this season. And uh, they're gonna get full value. And besides which, they're at ringside to watch this game between Laws and Jones. But Robertson does lead that game 9-5 as they play the home end. And before that game, I had a quiet word with Jennifer Clark Rear, who's been a fixture on the women's curling scene for a couple of decades or more. And she said to me, 
in a very thoughtful way. You just never know when it might be your last time. We're one, two. She might have just thrown her last rock in Scotty's competition. Come look at it, you guys, and talk about it. So Jennifer Jones and her team take time to look the situation over. Jennifer believes the yellow rock in We're the top to. okay. is second shot. And by the way, not a comment I would expect Jennifer Jones to make any time soon. Because she's still definitely yeah, feeling like it and loving it. I had nope. mentioned my friend, our friend Lauren de Pap. It's, it's just a um, shot we have to make. The only other thing is we do this. Acknowledged the shout out, and that's yeah, very kind, but he didn't need here, to though. necessarily yeah. include love better. watching Good. curling in the middle of summer here. It's that cool. little bit of uh, time zone thing that uh, you have trouble getting your mind around. The uh, uh, other end of the world, it's summertime right now. We can only hope that he's covered in mosquitoes. <laughs> Mackenzie Zacharias, they have agreed that the thing to do is to beat Caitlin to the forefoot. Up against a rock already in the forefoot. The center line is soon to have Four five rocks right on here. it. Stay with it. It's not bad. Yep. Through. Yep. Hard. Roll off. Yep. Roll off. Yep. 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 Okay. Time to do some cleanup. Seven eighths, low. Still kind of seeing the out. Jill Officer's target is the direct center of the rock. She's going to throw this hard enough that it will overcome any tendency on the rock to curl. Full extension. I'd hoped to tick a yellow on the way through, but didn't. A bit unlucky. Four feet. Remember here that Caitlin Laws does trail by two, so with this being the last end, she's got to manufacture a deuce somehow. She does have her what? second point in behind her corner guard but that's a lot of congestion in the center of the rings. Line's good. Let it work if you can. Clean, looks heavy. Just halfway. Okay, smash rock, we've got no line. We're okay, four feet. Looks heavy to me. Really? Yeah, go max. Yep, 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 both sides now of, of the forefoot are covered. One red rock up the center line needs to be driven through. Just contact this rock a little left of the center line to drive it straight back to remove a couple of yellows from the rings. Jocelyn Peterman, her first of this end, can't afford to cross the nose of it. Goes bang, bang, bang. Two yellow rocks removed from play. A red bites the top of the rings. We can't quite see that yellow rocks at the top of the image, but uh, yes, now we can. We can see that yellow is probably shot stone. Red biting just in front of it. Red over at the side. A dramatic change in the end. With another run back opportunity already set up for Team Laws. You gotta go. Are we heavy? Are we through? We're close. Do I know then? Know then. 
This guard slides through the port. It's going to go deep into the rings. It's going to get just to the T-line, biting the button. Three red stones to come. And a half, okay. two and a half minutes left. There are three red stones to come. Laws does have one timeout left. Remember, they used a timeout way back in the fifth end, uncharacteristic but necessary at the time. So, no real panic at this stage. So they need to run again, right up the center line. Another intern. This rock designed to get rid of the yellow rock that's at the top of the rings. They get to the nose of it, they run it straight back. They do get that double bang, bang, bang. Whoops, they kill their own, but they leave a couple of red biters, so they do still have the second and the third point. Jones with shot rock on the button. Well buried. Both red biters directly behind guards. A terrific outcome, played the angles perfectly. Shots two and three behind cover. And playing out the string, the Robertson McLeod really game has player. ended. Leaving the feature game, Laws Jones, 10th end. Center of attention, all eyes focused at center sheet of this three sheet configuration in the Manitoba Scotties. You can go. Nobody is heading for the exits. These are hardcore curling fans. Two Jones stones to come. It is the wide intern draw. She yes. wants to get second shot into yes. the rings. Yes. This is really moving. To be better than the two biters. Hard. Wants to be in the 12 foot. Here she goes, crashing across. She is going to get by. What a tremendous scrub by the front end. And we'll come to rest just back now on the back side of the T-line. So Caitlin looks at the out shot that she's had for a while, running the red rock in from the wings. Yeah. And don't bet you against it, the possibility of an angled in double kill to lie three. I might up the ante on that. Don't even think of betting against it. Yeah. We're hitting it pretty thin, so I'll make have some weight behind it. About a quarter. When Caitlin lets this rock go, she'll be down to just under a minute of time left for her last stone. She will have the last time out to play. Her clock stops at 50 seconds. This is the critical shot of the game, however. She needs to hit the outside of this red rock, crash it across. She's just going to tick it. That probably ends the game. We'll see, however, as uh, there are two rocks left to come. Not many angles that can be used. Jones saying, okay, where do we put a third rock in the ring so that it doesn't help laws and so that it simply does the one thing we need it to do, which is to it's gotta make sure prevent. I got She's got 
that. Caitlin will have a All double right. run yeah, back yeah, on the center too. reds. And then she's got to stick it. Yeah, I don't mind that. Even if we don't count it too, it's also. No, come here. here. Coming she's from the top. The yellow, red, double. Jennifer's actually yeah, describing it better loss. than I can. But if I go here, it's pretty we win the game. I don't think you ever set up a triple. Like, no. like even if I'm here. Yeah, you just have to out count the other two bases. But I mean, yeah, I can get there here. Yeah. So a lot of we'll good call her next time out when it runs out. <laughs> so they're going to run their second time out into their first time out. We hope that uh, um, the Hall of Fame time maker adjacent to our broadcast booth, Carl German, like is it. on top of the timeout situation. Jennifer looking at all kinds of things. But it seems that the fairly simple shot here, Barry Gorlick, is for her to kill this red rock over on the Scotty's logo okay. on the left. Whether she rolls in or whether she doesn't, I think I've seen the uh, there is the face, no yeah. way that uh, yeah. Caitlin Laws ends like up a, with two I mean, in the rings, no matter whether or not she I makes get. a run back double yeah. kill. Right, because she uh, has like, to, uh, in effect, yeah. waste the second hard. counter on the center line as the kill as rock the kill on rock. the two yellow ones. I, mean, I suppose there's a chance it just rolls over and gets a little smidge of a bite. Yeah. I don't know if that's a technical term or not, but but we'll see. Jennifer Jones with all the time in the world, her timeout clock clicking down and uh, to a minute, and she's got a minute and a half on her regular clock. So here it goes. This really is the shot to win the yep. game. Whoa. The out turn yeah. hit, yeah. just yeah. simply get rid of that red rock. Whoa. Oh boy. Uh, but she has left a yellow, a timeout called. So timeout gives a minute and a half yeah, of have. time. They that have 47 seconds of time on their yeah. clock, so effectively they have so about two minutes to make a determination yeah. on what the heck to do here. Caitlin has just seen a shot that until this moment I hadn't seen. She's talking about a double raise on the yellow rock, which yeah. isn't visible at the top of the screen, onto her red rock, Quarter, third. barely clearing the biter, and then clearing yeah. out the two rocks in the direction I've indicated them. Yep. So the yellow outside like the top of the rings has to, there's the yellow rock we're talking about. She has yeah. to hit okay. the outside of that yellow yeah, across the it. face of the red rock, running it virtually straight back for a double kill. I don't think so. Nothing She's to it. it hard. I don't think so. Again, for the second time in four days, ladies and gentlemen, do not try this at home. But, uh, fair to say, Barry, that uh, compared with the previous attempt at an in-off double kill, this is probably an easier shot. It is because if she hits it where she wants to hit it, the physics of the rocks will actually take care of the rest. It's a much straighter shot. So here it goes. It is underway. It is an out turn hit. It needs to hit the high side of the yellow stone. Yellow across the face of red. Yellow, red, straight back, right between the wickets. So close to a double kill, dramatic victory. What a wonderful shot, unfortunate miss, but a great way to end a game. It is a 7-8-9 official 9-5 final result. The game way more close than that. And so uh, Jennifer Jones will bury Gorlick, go into the final game tomorrow. We'll see Abby Ackland and Beth Peterson come back on this very sheet of ice at 8 o'clock tonight for a tiebreaker game. And that should be a dandy. And imagine that. Here's a headline we don't see more often than about once every year, Jennifer Jones in the Scotties final. Well, she doesn't play here very often. More <laughs> often, she's Team Canada. So it is, Laws de defeated by Jones. Ignore that 9-5 score, it was way closer than that. And uh, we will be back with you, eight o'clock this evening, Abby Ackland, Beth Peterson, 
playing for the opportunity to advance. Thanks for joining us. Today's sponsor, Sunrise Credit Union, building a brighter future together. Eat. Meet. Stay. Play! Canad Inn's destination centers are your home for hospitality, with 10 locations in Manitoba and one in North Dakota, featuring the finest in accommodations, food and beverage, entertainment, banquet and conference facilities, and so much more. For the best service and best value, your only stop is Canad Inns. Call today at 1-888-33-CANAD or visit us right now at CanadInns.com. You can win a pair of tickets for the 2023 Tim Hortons Briar in London or the 2023 BKT Tires and OK Tire Men's Worlds in Ottawa plus $500. Or maybe equip your team with a set of four of Asham's new Ultra Force brushes. And at the same time, support the Manitoba Curling Hall of Fame and Museum and Curl Manitoba's Curling for Life Endowment Fund. Raffle tickets are available now. One for $5, four for $10, 10 for $20. Buy online at fundingchange.ca slash curlmanitoba or scan the QR code on your screen right now. <laughs> 